This is a massive conventional oil tanker built in 2018. And here is another tanker launched in 2008. They look very similar, except for those giant spinning cylinders. This is the rotating sail system, which uses the Magnus effect. With this system, the ship achieved a significant reduction in fuel consumption and pollutant emissions. On this other ship, with four such systems, the reduction was almost double. Isn't it fascinating that such a conventional ship can become so much more efficient just by adding these spinning cylinders? And this isn't the only wind propulsion system now being installed on modern ships. These are inflatable Michelin sails, and here is a ship capable of transporting 7,620 vehicles using rigid sails 131 feet tall. Then there's this bulk carrier, 771 feet long, which has an enormous sail right at the front. This company is even working on a project where ships would no longer need to refuel. There's also this system with a giant kite. Let's explore how these systems work and how much fuel savings they provide. Essentially, the extra propulsion generated by these sails can help in two ways, increasing the ship's speed, allowing it to reach its destination faster, or enabling the main engines to operate at lower power, reducing fuel consumption and pollutant emissions. As they still have conventional engines, they avoid the variability and uncertainty of wind propulsion associated with wind speed and direction. Currently, there are three main categories of wind propulsion technologies under research. One of them uses these enormous spinning cylinders you're seeing. This is the Flettner rotor system, named after the German engineer Anton Flettner, the first to build a ship using this system in 1924. The vessel successfully sailed using two rotors, 50 feet tall and about 10 feet in diameter. In 1926, a larger ship with three rotors was constructed. However, the global financial crisis of 1929 slowed the market, and oil prices reached historic lows. This made the return on investment through fuel savings too slow, reducing consumer interest in buying new ships. The situation worsened and prolonged due to World War II. This system, like other wind propulsion systems, remained sidelined until the 70s oil crisis, which revived interest. Some research continued into the 80s, but then oil prices dropped again, shelving the projects once more. In the early 2000s, history repeated itself, leading to 2008, when Enercon used Flettner rotors on a large ship to transport wind turbine components. According to the company, the rotors achieved a 15% reduction in fuel consumption compared to similar conventional ships. From that point, companies specializing in rotating sails began to emerge. For example, these two rotors from North Power, standing 98 feet tall with a diameter of 16 feet, reduced fuel consumption by 8.2%. Meanwhile, Animoy claims reductions between 5 and 30%. This bulk carrier, with four rotors each 52 feet tall and 6 feet in diameter, achieved a 12.5% reduction in fuel consumption. This system uses the Magnus effect, which works as follows. When an air current passes over the spinning cylinder, the air molecules near the cylinder's surface stick to it. This thin layer of molecules drags the next layer, moving it in the same direction as the spinning surface. On the side where the cylinder wall moves with the wind direction, the airflow accelerates, reducing pressure due to the Bernoulli effect. This principle states that as the velocity of a fluid increases, its pressure decreases. On the opposite side, where the cylinder wall moves against the wind direction, the airflow slows down, creating a high-pressure region. This difference in pressure generates a thrust perpendicular to the wind flow, pointing toward the lower pressure region. This is similar to how lift is generated on an airplane wing by pressure differences above and below the wing. This is the same effect seen when kicking a soccer ball with a curve to make it spin, or this viral video of a spinning ball being thrown from a very high dam. As the wind direction changes from being perpendicular to the ship's navigation direction to becoming aligned with it, the propulsion provided to the ship decreases while the lateral force increases. Therefore, there is a certain useful wind direction spectrum similar to a conventional sail. This chart shows the percentage of power saved depending on the wind direction and speed. This study is theoretical, but you can see that for winds of 15 knots, there is a 5% fuel saving. 
and for very strong winds of 30 knots, savings can reach 23%. If the wind direction changes 180 degrees, generating thrust in the opposite direction of the ship's movement, it is sufficient to reverse the cylinder's rotation. As you might be wondering, yes, energy is required to spin the cylinder. However, the pressure difference it generates when the wind passes by creates a thrust much larger than what would be obtained using this energy with conventional propellers. The system can be powered by an electric motor, a hydraulic motor, or a diesel motor. Since the cylinder speed can vary, an electric or hydraulic motor is preferable. The higher the rotation speed, the greater the thrust. In practice, however, it must vary according to the wind direction and speed relative to the ship. For stronger winds, the cylinder spins faster, as the thrust generated will be large enough to compensate for the increased fuel consumption of the motor at higher speeds. This means that the maximum rotation speed of the cylinder limits the utilization of very strong winds. For example, those used by Enercon reach up to 300 RPM. Of course, more powerful motors are more expensive, so there's no point in installing an oversized motor for winds that rarely occur. The rotors are also only activated when winds are strong enough to generate fuel savings. In addition to rotation speed, another factor that increases thrust is longer and wider cylinders. The large disc at the top of the cylinder is designed to reduce air losses that would escape from above. The efficiency of this system is 10 to 13 times greater than a conventional sail and around 3 times greater than a wing-shaped sail, considering the same surface area. This allows the rotors to be built much smaller for the same propulsion force. They are lighter, exert less structural stress during storms, and interfere less with cargo handling or when passing under bridges. To make them even more practical, they can be positioned so they don't obstruct cargo handling. They can also be installed on rails, like those developed by Animoy, or even designed to fold down, allowing larger cylinders to be constructed while still being able to pass under bridges. Going back to 1985, the French captain Jacques-Yves Cousteau and his team launched the Alcyone, a ship that used turbo sails to assist its conventional propulsion. A turbo sail is a fixed oval-shaped cylinder with a movable flap at the back. A fan inside the tube reduces pressure on one side of the sail, which has small exposed holes. The airflow from the lower pressure region is sucked through and adheres to the surface acting like an airplane wing. The flap also slides to cover the holes on one side and release them on the other, directing the thrust to align with the ship's navigation direction. According to the organization that developed it, its thrust coefficient is 3.5 to 6 times greater than conventional sails. However, there is limited data available about its performance. Moving to the present, we have a modern yet classic system, the Wing Sails by Oceanbird. They plan to install a single sail on a roll-on, roll-off cargo ship capable of transporting 7,620 vehicles. By 2026, they plan to have a final version with multiple sails. They initially began with a giant version featuring a telescopic sail, similar to a radio antenna, which would extend to 262 feet in height when fully deployed. However, they later switched to another version with a large flap at the back and half the height, which reduces rolling motion and drag. According to the company, this smaller version delivers the same performance as the previous design. The sails are rigid, with masts made of steel and the rest of the sail constructed from fiberglass. The sails in the current project are 131 feet tall and 46 feet wide, weighing approximately 150 tons each. The sails are shaped like wings with a symmetrical profile, allowing them to use winds coming from both sides. Depending on the angle of attack of the sail relative to the wind and the positioning of the flap, which makes the profile asymmetrical, the wind accelerates on one side and decelerates on the other, creating a pressure difference and thrust. If the wind becomes too strong, the flap folds and the sail can be laid flat on the deck of the ship, preventing damage to the sail or causing the ship to capsize. This also allows the ship to pass under bridges. The ship will still have engines for port maneuvers and for when wind conditions are unfavorable. 
according to the company, a single installed sale will reduce fuel consumption by 7 to 10 percent, saving 178,000 gallons of diesel per year. The Wind Challenger system, developed by the Japanese company MOL, is also a wing sail system, but with a telescopic structure. It was installed in 2022 on an enormous bulk carrier that measures 771 feet in length. The structure, where the panels are fixed and the internal mast are made of steel, while the panels themselves are made of fiberglass reinforced plastic to keep them lightweight. This is the same material used for wind turbine blades and parts of aircraft. By reducing weight, the system minimizes its impact on ship stability and allows for more cargo capacity. The fiberglass sail weighs about 88,000 pounds, and the mast weighs 132,000 pounds, totaling 220,000 pounds. The system uses sensors to detect wind direction and speed, automatically extending the sail to maximize wind use or retracting it to prevent damage. It also adjusts the sail angle automatically. The sail's angle adjustments allow the ship to sail with tailwinds, pushing the sail, as well as crosswinds, and even at a slight headwind angle, where the sail functions like an airplane wing. Like other systems, the sail cannot utilize winds coming directly head-on from the ship's bow. To fully leverage this system, the ship will optimize its route, traveling the shortest distance while maximizing winds. According to the company, this can reduce fuel consumption by up to 8% on a voyage between Japan and North America. The first sail features four segments, totaling 50 feet in width and 177 feet in height when fully extended, roughly the height of a 17-story building. Although the first installed system has a single sail, the company plans to install multiple sails on future projects and across various ship types. The more sails, the greater the efficiency, but this also reduces cargo capacity since, despite being lightweight for their size, the sails still add significant weight. Additionally, they may interfere with cargo handling and involve high installation costs. The company is also developing a futuristic project where the ship would no longer need refueling. When the winds are strong enough, the sails generate propulsion that powers underwater generators. These generators produce electricity for an electrolyzer that breaks down water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is stored in tanks and used later when the wind is weak, passing through a fuel cell to generate electricity and power electric propellers. Imagine a ship sailing without needing fuel. Besides the environmental benefits, this would significantly lower shipping costs and reduce the prices of goods worldwide. Even Michelin, the well-known tire manufacturer, is developing sails for ships. These sails are made of fabric. With the press of a button, a small compressor at the base inflates the sail around a telescopic mast, giving it a wing shape. This wavy design ensures the sail maintains its aerodynamic shape. Being inflatable, the sail experiences less mechanical stress, making it more durable. It is fully automated, adjusting itself based on wind speed and direction assisting the ship's main engines. According to Michelin, these sails can be installed on any cargo ship and can reduce fuel consumption by 5 to 20 percent, reaching up to 50 percent on ships specially designed for them. However, these figures are estimates, not based on real-world data. Michelin has already tested the system on small boats, but the first large-scale installation was completed in June 2023 on the cargo ship and container vessel MN Pelican. The Ocean Wing system is similar to Ocean Bird in both function and name. It also features wing sails with flaps, but uses a flexible structure instead of rigid sails. Each sail measures 108 feet tall and weighs 44,000 pounds. The company plans to develop sails as tall as 164 feet in the future. When encountering very strong winds, the sails can be easily retracted, and like other systems, they can fold flat on the deck to avoid obstructing cargo operations or passing under bridges. Ocean Wings also offers an optional system to install the sails on rails, allowing them to be repositioned to free up deck space for cargo handling. The sail is made of polyvinyl chloride, PVC, and according to the company, it can withstand winds exceeding 140 knots or about 161 miles per hour, the equivalent of a Category 5 hurricane. 
Despite this, the sails are typically retracted at 80 knots to prevent damage and maintain the ship's stability. The company claims that these sails can reduce fuel consumption by up to 45%, but field data is still needed to confirm this. The system has already been installed on a small scientific vessel that uses other renewable energy sources, and also on a ship named Canape, which has four of these sails and is used to transport the largest components of the Ariane 6 rocket to French Guiana. If such a major company trusts this system to transport sensitive rocket parts, that's a strong endorsement. Several other wing sail systems are being developed. For example, Windship Technology features multiple wing sails, each 115 feet tall, installed on a rotating base. The wind wing system by Bar Technologies has recently begun operations. This system also uses wing sails, but they are much wider. Because of their size, they are operated with the aid of cameras to provide better navigation visibility. The third category of wind propulsion systems involves giant kites, like those used by the Sea Wing system from the French company Air Seas and the now discontinued Skysail system. The kite's enormous traction force is transmitted to the ship through a tow cable made of high-density polyethylene. You may wonder how the kite is controlled since it only has one cable. The answer lies in a control capsule suspended from the kite, which gathers data on wind speed and direction. This capsule automatically adjusts the kite's angle and position using three or more actuators to control the cords. The tow cable also transmits energy and data about the ship's speed and course. This system has already been installed on several vessels and is popular because it requires minimal retrofitting. Another advantage is that it easily uses high-altitude winds, which are typically stronger and more constant, usually operating at heights between 300 and 980 feet. Between 2006 and 2009, a SkySail system installed on a container ship achieved an average reduction of 5% in fuel consumption, reaching up to 12% on certain routes. Meanwhile, Air Seas claims its Sea Wing system can reduce fuel consumption by 20%. According to Air Seas, this system generates 5 to 25 times more thrust per square meter of surface area compared to traditional sails. Interestingly, the kite's double-layer design gives it an aerodynamic shape similar to an airplane wing, allowing it to sail at angles of up to 50 degrees against the wind, just like the other systems. One of the kite's biggest advantages is that it does not interfere with cargo handling on the ship's deck. The kite can be easily retracted and stowed when not in use. As we've seen, the efficiency gains from these systems range between 8 and 15%, theoretically reaching 25 to 30 percent under optimal wind conditions, depending on the type and size of the system. So, why aren't these technologies widely adopted yet? The primary reason is the hesitation among maritime shipping companies to install newly developed equipment. Despite some of these technologies being a century old, like Flettner rotors, their large-scale implementation has only recently become viable due to the development of new materials. Modern materials offer greater strength and reduced weight, allowing wind propulsion to assist in ship movement without taking up too much cargo capacity. Additionally, these systems can now be easily automated, making them more efficient and user-friendly. Another factor is the evolution of ship design. Historically, sailing ships were built entirely around their sails for maximum efficiency. However, with the introduction of internal combustion engines, the design focus shifted to cargo capacity, prioritizing clear decks to simplify cargo handling. As we've seen, modern companies are developing wind propulsion systems with these considerations in mind. Each solution is tailored to avoid interference with deck operations. Regarding the variability and uncertainty of wind, modern weather forecasting models are now extremely precise, and winds over the open ocean are far more consistent. Plus, wind is free, unlike oil, which is subject to price fluctuations, and oil prices are currently quite high. Another curious factor driving adoption is that many companies now have emission reduction targets that are even more ambitious than those set by governments. Since these technologies take decades to develop, many companies are proactively investing in wind propulsion to avoid losing access to important shipping routes, such as those leading to the United States. 
Furthermore, customers of these shipping companies are increasingly measuring the environmental impact of their supply chains and recognizing that maritime transport contributes significantly to global emissions.